Okay, guys, subscribers or whatever. Acetic acid is very, very cheap, and it doesn't matter what you use, a, a Varox vaporizer or some other vaporizer. It's very effective at killing the varroa mites that are not in the cat brood. So you got to do it several times. And last year and the year before, I used Formic Pro Formic Acid. And if you check my videos from a year ago, I used the Formic Pro in September 2019. And I thought, okay, the varroa mites are gone. But I was wrong. End of October, I started noticing huge amounts of bees, dead bees in my, in my hives. Okay, I have not cleaned out these hives in quite some time. I'm not finding I'm not finding any dead bees. No dead bees. I'll go down to another one. Well, I've got a lot of weight on these. I can't get all of them out. Okay, these right here are the colonies that were down in my South Apiary and a few miles south of me. Okay, here's one I can get out right away. Okay, I have not cleaned this out. That's not a lot of bees. That's just a few. Check my videos from a year ago, I was getting huge amounts, enough to fill a coffee can out of each, each hive. So the silic acid vaporizing works. I did it four times, twice in September, twice in October. It's very effective, but you have to do it several times. And, okay, what I noticed, I didn't feed these colonies syrup that were to my South April. I didn't feed them syrup during the fall because it was too far away. And... I don't know how the commercial beekeepers are feeding your syrup. They're putting syrup on top, covering all the holes. You got to have a hole for the moisture to come out. When you have you put syrup in, there's a lot of water in that. They have to evaporate that. They have to be warm. They heat the hive, and the, and the water comes out. Okay, this is how I do it. And these were very aggressive. So rather than taking out the empty jar in the feeder, I just went ahead and I stuck another one in there. See. And with these, you gotta you turn them a little bit just to make sure they don't get stuck. Sometimes if you don't turn them and loosen them up a little bit, they get stuck and it doesn't fill the, the trough. See, I just like little cows lining up to get fed. And when it's cold, they keep each other warm. If they make contact with each other, they keep each other warm and they still go to the feeder. And I guess it doesn't matter how cold the syrup is, they still, they still consume it. So that's, that's how I'm feeding them right now. November's supposed to warm up, and here it is, October, before Halloween, and it's bone-chilling cold. The other day it was in the 30s. I don't see any evidence of global warming. Sorry, but I don't. So, I got these uh, road sign posts out. And the reason I put those in during the summer is because when it rains, you don't want your uh, bottom board sitting in water. So I got those out. I've got these strapped. So if I need to bring them in, you know, I, can, I have a number eight cloth on there, wire cloth, screen. I can check, I can look down there, see how big the colony is. It's supposed to be in the 20s, not tonight, but the next night. And I can also look here with a little teeny LED flashlight. Look in there, see? If I see them chilled, I bring them in. This one right here did really well this year one of the only huge ones and then over here we got some more huge ones but anyway i did a basically a trial run here i got all these moved into here i just wanted to see how many holes i have bees can get out of the smallest hole and i'm trying to trying to figure out here's a here's a shim and a deep that aren't really making good contact there's a gap there so i fold up some paper to stick in there and I'm still getting bees out. And it can be frustrating sometimes to figure out where they're coming from. See, here's another one. So I'm getting a bee every 10 minutes. And the reason I'm doing this now, if I get bees on the door here, all I got to do is just open a door and brush them out. It's not too terribly cold. It's low 40s right now. And if they can't find the original hive that used to be here, they'll end up in these, which is all right. These could use a few more bees. And I'm going to move these forward a little bit and gradually move them forward so I can get them on the deck if I have to. Right now they're fine, but all beekeepers know if you had experience with honeybees, 
your colonies start out big during the winter and they gradually get smaller as the winter progresses because of the bees either dying from virosis or just old age. What I noticed from all my years of beekeeping, colonies build up in June, July. In August, you really start to notice the varroa mites. And because of these treatments that you can't use when it's hot, like Formic Pro, you couldn't use it when it's hot and it kills 10% of your queens anyway. You can't use it during the summer because it's too hot. So you have to wait until the end of summer. But during the month of August, your colonies really start dwindling down. Um, I missed an opportunity first weekend of August to use acetic acid vaporizing, and I didn't do it. I'm going to, from now on, if I get a chance to do it during August, I'm going to start doing it. So I'm going to start treating earlier. Instead of after Labor Day, it's going to be before Labor Day. So it's just an update. And it's going to be a long winter if it's this cold already. <laughs> okay, thank you.